What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hold Us and Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Deron. I got both of my co-hosts on the line with me tonight. I got my man, Jay Bavo. What's good, man? Not much. What's going on tonight, fellas? Definitely looking forward to this episode. This one's long overdue, but want to remind you, you can catch us on TikTok as well as subscribe to us on YouTube at Hold Us and Podcast. Also, for those interested in advertising on the podcast or a promo, you can shoot us a DM at Hold Us and Podcast as well as email us at Hold Us and Podcast at gmail.com. All right, T. I uh, also got my man SD in the building. What's good, man? Nothing, man. My sinus is acting up, but I'm going to fight through it. But first, I want to give a uh, shout out to Brother Soul Productions for always keeping the background audio fresh. And I want to remind you all to donate to the Hold a Husband podcast on Cash App and PayPal. All right, T. Uh, I want to remind everybody, y'all can catch the audio playback of the podcast every Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time on the core94.com. Uh, tonight's episode is titled Somebody Gotta Say It. Uh, and we're going to be talking about some of the unpleasant truths um, in regards to the modern women and the current dating scenario uh, with one of our guests. So um, that'll be a real interesting topic. Uh, but y'all know how we do around here, man. We like to uh, get things started by discussing stuff that we've seen on our timeline uh, or stuff that we've seen trending on social media. Uh, so we got, a, we got two real interesting videos this week. This first video... Uh, it's about a couple that was uh, traveling at the airport, uh, and the wife uh, made a decision that the husband didn't agree with. Let's take a listen. Did a husband cross the line when he left his wife at the airport? The husband explained they had about 15 minutes until boarding started, and his wife insisted on going to Starbucks, which was on a different terminal. He told her she didn't have time, but she didn't listen. He waited as long as possible, but when the gate agent was about to close the door, he decided to get on the plane, and the wife did not make the connection. Yeah, throw the whole wife away. First of all, he was going to visit his daughter. So when the wife decided to go to another terminal with 15 minutes to board the plane, she made him make a choice between her and his daughter. There so there was just a trip planned before. She overslept, so they already missed the flight. So this is the second time that they're going to try to see his daughter. So when she decided that she was going to delay or just take her sweet time like the plane was supposed to wait for her, then he did the right thing and he got his butt on that plane to go see his daughter. Man, I, 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 I'm glad that they have a, a level-headed sister uh, to give her opinion because I agree with everything that she said. Um, it's, it, it sounds like she was trying to, to make him miss the flight intentionally is what I got from it uh, after hearing, you know, the additional facts or whatnot. Uh, would it be in a stepdaughter type situation uh, and her, you know, our, you, you would think somebody that overslept and made you miss a flight already would be more at put in more effort to make sure that you don't miss the second one. So I, I, I see her attitude and her behavior being really problematic. Yeah, man, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I had to scratch my, my original <laughs> answer out once they started explaining it. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, but you know what? Either way, this this here dude here, he gonna be a, he gonna be in the doghouse when he get home. But yeah. at the at the same time, I commend him for leaving her right where she was at because she missed the she missed the flight earlier. I'm sure it was on purpose. And I'm sure that she wanted to go all of a sudden. She can't live without Starbucks for a few hour flight because she just got to have it. That was because she wanted him to miss the flight and not go. And that's the type of problematic behavior that causes a lot of marriages to end. When you got when you got somebody that's so selfish, so self-centered that everything got to be about them. If she didn't want to go. She should have told him from the beginning, hey, you know what? I really don't want to go. I'm sure that would have been a lot better than wasting money on a flight. Well, I mean, it sounds like a situation where he wants her to meet his daughter or he's trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what it is. I, I get it. I get it. But it sounds like a situation where he wa he wanted her to be a part of the trip. You know what I mean? Could have been. I mean, but, I but, know, even, you know. but you know what? Even then, it's just inconsiderate being okay Clearly, you agreed to go on the trip with the man. And then, you know, you do this little stuff, oversleeping on purpose, obviously. And then going to Starbucks when you have 50 minutes, you know, at another terminal, you know, good and well, you ain't got 
enough time to go to Starbucks at another terminal and go back and catch the flight. And you know, Starbucks at the airport, you see the lines of those Starbucks, man? She knew right. well. She knew what she was doing. They so, said they like, was married? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah some married couple. So I, like I said, I I commend the guy for having the nuts to leave her too. Yeah. You know, there are, the, there are a lot of dudes that would have would have let their daughter down and missed the flight and they allow their women to manipulate them with BS like that. You know what I mean? Like uh, passive aggressive stuff, intentionally doing stuff to cause delays and problems. Um, those those are things that you have to be able to nip in the bud or, or stand up to. Otherwise, it'll drive you crazy. But you know what? A, a lot of men still have that, you know, happy wife, happy life mentality. So you have a lot that'll do that just to keep her happy and say, OK, well, I have a happy wife. But, you know, like I say, with this, you know, like they say, once a coincidence, twice a pattern, and three times a habit. So this seems to be a pattern here. Yeah, but see, them type of them type of dudes don't get no respect. <clears throat> when they do when they do when they do anything for their lady, for their wife. For whoever, she knows that she can manipulate him, whether it's through her uh, uh, actions of something like this or not giving him sex. If he'll just do it, they they know that they can get you. And now yep. it's something that a lot of times they continue to do and continue to do. They remove the sex because they know you're going to give in and do what they need to do. So this here guy, man, this is the type of guy I can hang out with because he left her <laughs> right there and said, hey, man, you know what? I ain't got time for this because I'm sure he know his lady. They married. He know right. how she is. He know why she asked. That's why he said, you can try to go ahead, but you ain't going to make it. He knew just like she did. Yeah. So no doubt. I couldn't. Be Sometimes you got it. Like I couldn't either. Like that, that would frustrate me beyond belief. You know what I mean? Like, um, because it's it's so disrespectful, you know what I mean? Like yes. the fact that yeah. we've sp we've spent money from our household on plane tickets, and you are you know what I'm saying like missing flights and all that type of stuff costs you additional time and money that you you usually can't get back. Um, so yeah, I, I unless you yeah, unless you got yes, he was right. Questions. Yeah, he's definitely in the doghouse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's okay. Sometimes, it's worth it. sometimes. Yeah, you gotta you gotta make a stand sometimes. So stand your yeah. shout out but shout I, out to my boy. Yeah, but I bet you this. I bet you that the group chat she's in told a whole different story. I bet you the group <laughs> chat said, "Man, don't you know that this bald head Negro left me in the in the airport and hopped on the plane when I went and got coffee?" Guaranteed, it's his yeah. fault. Because now <laughs> he done left his lady at the airport. You don't protect me. You left me at the air. I guarantee it. That, I don't that, put it past the one bit. I, I don't either. If this the behavior that you you are eluding, exuding while you outside because you don't want him to go, I guarantee you she flipped this whole thing around and made it his fault that she missed the flight as if she really wanted to go. I bet it. But see, a smart or it was something important or yeah, yeah, like hey. Yeah. But you know what? Here's a teachable moment here in this, right? When you're dating with a chick, this is where you gotta gauge her to see if she's a selfish person or not. Because there were probably signs in the initial dating stages before they got married that she's a selfish woman. She's done something, I guarantee it. Absolutely. Ain't no doubt. Yeah, I, I mean, with the fact that they married, he obviously didn't do a good job vetting her because like you said, did a, a, a person that operates like this that doesn't just become that way overnight. No. Um, no. So there had there have been have to be lots of things uh, or at least attempts to manipulate and all this those type of issues. Um, but uh, and and those especially when you're in a situation where it's a blended family where you have separate children and stepkids and all that. Um, that's the type of person that'll mistreat a child and you know what I'm saying like create yeah, do things like intentionally. Them. Yeah, because because they want to create tension and things of that nature. So you got to be real careful about that, uh, especially yeah. if you have small children that can't advocate for themselves or tell you what's going on. Yeah, that's why I always I tell women, man, when they tell me that, hey, this here dude, he wasn't a good leader or he was a narcissist and he was all these things. <laughs> and you say, well, how long was you with him? Oh, we were together five years, five years. He didn't just become a narcissist at year five. Exactly. He did. He just didn't become a dude that couldn't lead a household at year five. He just didn't become an abuser or whatever at year five. Nine times out of ten, that man was that when you met him. 
that woman was that when he met her. It's just that a lot of times as people, men and women, we tend to overlook certain things. No, the rose colored glasses. Yeah, that we know yeah. our red flags, but we overlook them because maybe she looked good and she got a nice body. Or maybe he got money and he he drive, he ride real nice and dress real nice. We we both do easier things, but then they always come back to bite us later on. The very things that we should have not even entertained them for is the very thing that typically breaks up the relationship later on. So let that be a lesson out here. Pay attention to people because they tell you who they are really early on. Yeah, you got to make sure you pay attention to the fundamentals when it comes down to choosing a, a long-term mate. Uh, let's keep things rolling, man. Now, this next video, uh, we, we, we showing a little hometown love. Uh, we wanted to uh, discuss a video uh, from SD's page with a discussion with his son uh, in the current dating market. Uh, let's take a look, y'all. Aiden, mm -hmm. now tell tell Deshaun why you don't like the girl no more at school, the oh, one you used to like, the eight-year-old. What'd she say? She wants to be ratchet and bougie. She, she wanted to be what? Ratchet and bougie when she grow up. She wanted to be ratchet and bougie when she grow up. A nine-year-old. A nine-year-old. Tell her what else she told you to date her, in order to date her. What'd she say? I gotta pay her. He gotta pay her to date her. How much? Like $15 a month. <laughs> $15 a month to date him as a nine-year-old, man. Serious? Dude, when he told me that story, I couldn't believe it, man. Nine years old? Nine years old saying she want to be ratchet and bougie when she grow up. She got a phone? Yeah. And her mama act like that, right? Oh, yeah. You can see it. It's a shame, man. Damn, man. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, man. Well, first off, I want to shout out to USD. Uh, that's exactly why fathers are needed in young men's lives to teach them to be able to evaluate women and make decisions like this. Um, so the fact that he made the decision and then told you about it afterward, kudos to you on your parenting, bro. Good Thank job. You, um, <laughs> but it's such a sad thing to hear, though, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we see the ratchet videos. We see the sexy reds and all that. Uh, but a lot of these women are mothers. They raising real kids that are, you know what I'm saying? That, that go on to raise other kids. So it creates a negative cycle. And th that's toxic from the, from the ground up if she's a nine-year-old with that mentality already. Yeah, man. You know what? What I was, I was more um, proud of and flabbergasted by was the fact that he said, oh, her mom acts like that. You can see it. He said in the video, oh, you can see it. He said he observed this on his own, the wow. ratchet behavior and the way that her mom acts because the mom worked at his school. So he has observed this here behavior from the mom. That's how he's like, that's where she get it from. It's amazing, man, that these here kids are so smart and pick yeah. up on so many things that we don't even think that they, they pick up on. You know what I'm saying? And, exactly. it, you know, as, as parents, a lot of times, sure. we don't understand that the kids soak in everything we do. Our be, no matter what we say, we can say one thing, but if our behavior is another thing, that's exactly what they are going to do. So this mom behaves this way this ratchet and bougie type of stuff and period for no reason right Say that over <laughs> and, and the lashes go, i know yeah. she got the lashes and the wigs yep. and all that and here go this little girl at nine eight nine years old telling my boy that he has to pay her 15 dollars a month to date her as if they going somewhere <laughs> and and that she's she wants to be ratchet and bougie when she grows up it's only coming from one place it's coming from the mom and yep. from the mom it's coming from social media music and tv that's where and maybe mm -hmm. even her mom too and the dad yeah. is in the life but the mom has the kid more so the gotcha. dad probably don't don't see it as much enough to kind of curb it i don't know i don't know the situation but this is sad man because we're so many young girls growing up just like this Go ahead, yeah, no, no doubt, man. Like you said, it's, it's, but they don't tell lies. 
that's kids drunk and angry folks. So I so I believe <laughs> so I believe every word your son said, you know, yeah. who you know, listen, who's right we gotta look at who's raising these kids and this is what we got here. A lot of these girls, you know, listen to Ice Spice, Sexy Red pushing this sexual degeneracy and now these moms are showing these showing these kids, man. Yeah, I mean, as a guy, you know, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I was just different, but teenage pregnancy really became a thing in the '90s. So I think our generation yep. was the first generation where it became common for somebody to be 15 or 16 with a child, right? Um, and now there are a lot of people our age that are grandparents. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like that's crazy to think you 44 and you're a grandparent. You know what I mean? Uh, where in, in generations before us, it was like 55, 60, you have to be really elderly in order to have that many generations pass through. But man, the, the biggest detriment that come that I, I can see from the teen parent generation is you have a, a generation where they try to be friends with their kids instead of actually being the parent. Um, and unfortunately, it's a cycle that is very, very difficult to break. Yeah. But see, th this is why this is why it's so important for a dad not just to be there, not just to be there, um, taking a kid to get some shoes every now and then and seeing them twice a month as a father. This is why so, it's so important to be ingrained in that child's life and spend quality time with them as well as the financial part. If y'all aren't together, you got to do that, too. But it's so important because the dad, the dad is the disciplinarian. And I mean the real disciplinarian within a home nine times out of 10. You ever seen a kid act different around his dad than he do to mom or, or to the kid, period? They yeah, act out of time. different around the dad because the dad is the real disciplinarian, the one that garnishes that respect because he got that power and it's understood that he got that. He, he's the disciplinarian and the guider. And well, the well, do you think that that's true? Okay, so I, think what's true. I, I mean, what you're saying, we know that men like us that are rational, reasonable careers and all that definitely wouldn't date no ratchet, bougie chick like that we're describing but a guy that does date that type of woman or like that type of woman do you think that he's a good role model or you know he might be part of the ratchet culture too you know what i'm saying like that like yeah. there are a bunch of dudes that call their girl b words and stuff like like it's just part of they like they daily lifestyle and they kids see all that too yeah and, and that's very that's very possible you still have that but i don't even care whatever be in your kid's life because there, there's a better chance that even if he's a ratchet daddy mm -hmm. that he is going to be on his daughter like wait a minute what are you doing you know what i'm saying he might he might like women like that but he not he he also might not like his or want his daughter to do that you know what i'm saying because it's completely Man, different I, at that point it's a possibility so, there yeah i mean it's always a possibility but you but, know what you know what what is this makes reminds me of Whoa. Every year during prom season, you see it's like the ratchetest, <laughs> the most sexualized now, stuff. Now. Yeah, and so it, it always makes me think like, damn, they parents they allowed that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's always a reflection of the parents to me. Yep, they out here wearing see-through dresses and everything. You can see they lingerie under the dress. Like, like damn, they got that dog go to prom. I I've seen pictures like that. Yeah, man, it's crazy, but that's because that's because ain't nobody, you know. I ain't gonna say nobody, but it's not a lot of real guidance within the households nowadays. Our households, especially, you know what I mean. Like I said, man, you know, dads are there for that purpose, for the for the purpose of, of giving the guidance, the discipline, and the structure. So but you know, go ahead. You know, that's the I want to touch on an earlier point that you made, which was a great point kind of segues into this right when you talk about nowadays they got the internet and seeing what they saw on tv you know the reality tv show you think about when we grew up you know in the 90s you had shows that had strong follow figures whether it's family matters the fresh prince yep. of bel-air yep. now you know True. after you know after the mid 2000s yeah, the reality tv era kind of kicked in took over you know a lot of them grew up in that bad girls club era you know how baby daddies fighting yeah you know 
and, and then social media kind of just evacuated all the ratchetness and sexual degeneracy. So now that's what you have today here, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to be rooted in. I, I know that there are people in this generation that, that are not like that. Um, but I think our generation, we got a little ratchet in us. You know what I'm saying? But it can't be your overwhelming per, part of your lifestyle and your persona. You know what I mean? Like, like okay, there are certain behaviors that we can all resonate with. Oh, you know, certain music. Uh, like basically a healthy yeah. balance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, I, that's that's one of the things that makes, you know, black people, especially the ones that like us that come from poverty or, or you know, come from nothing and become something. Um, that being in touch with that broke side or that poverty side, that's what really what keep you connected to the culture. Um, but Absolutely. you don't have to be ratchet, though. You don't have to be ghetto. You don't have to do stuff that makes us look bad as a people or make you look bad as a woman. You know what I mean? Like, because the last thing that I, man, I can't even imagine how embarrassing that would be um, to be the type of parent that you walk in and other kids recognize the negativity in you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, here's the thing. You got, like, for example, high school, some folks know they, know they, um, mothers is on OnlyFans. Yo, kids is getting clowned for that these days. That's that's how yeah. crazy this guy. Yeah, and I think that I think that for for us growing up in the '90s and hearing like a Dana Howard freak like me or something like mm -hmm. that, right? Um, that it was it was just a little different. It it wasn't as raunchy as it is now, and I think that we were more thinkers in the '90s. So and 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 you know even if you had a parent there, a lot of times your parent wasn't that ratchet. And, and do bougie like that, you know what I'm saying? They still had a little bit more, a little bit more substance, and taught you certain things how to be a thinker. You didn't have phones doing the thinking for you, so now Ooh, yeah. a lot of these people growing up now, the phone is doing the thinking for them. They don't have, they don't have good um, visual role models in TV like you talked about, like we did. They don't have good role models within their friends because most of their friends growing up like they growing up and they don't see it on social media sitting around with a phone in their hand. So they ain't doing their own thinking out here. So it's I think it's a little different. When we heard gangster rap music back in the day, a lot of us took it as the rap music and left it at the rap music. We didn't turn into gangsters, a lot of us. You know what I'm saying? The majority right. of us. My but now too. I think the majority of women a, a nice half of them want to be hoes now and want to be because it's glorified it's glorified I, I a lot of women are are monetizing it so they're yep. they I I, to me i've always looked at it like there it's the easy button you know sexual monetizing your sexuality or being promiscuous for, for women requires no effort whatsoever you know what i mean like so um a lot of them will do that to try to get their rap career going on, get their music career going, or strip you know to what? try to get into a business. So I understand the, you know, it's, it's really no different than guys that try to sell dope and all that to try to put themselves on. Um, but that's not your only route. Um, and in the mentality behind it is ultimately gonna determine where you end up. Go well, ahead, Jay. No, I just wanted to piggyback off, off the, off, you know, become using the stripper to become a rapper. I think like, let's just take, say MC Light or Queen Latifah, for example, right? They were rappers that just happened to be females. Now we think of somebody like Ice Spice or Sexy Red. These are, you know, these are strippers and only fan models masquerading as rappers. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, it ain't a thing that's sexy about Sexy Red. Not a thing. <laughs> I agree. Like, Bro, it's, it's so many people that name. find her attractive. It's so many. I think the same thing every time I see her, but bro, there are so many people that find her very attractive, man. man it's man. it's unreal, man. Every time I see Shorty, I spray my phone with rage. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. The things that come out of her mouth. I was just watching the clip today when she like, yeah, I had chlamydia twice and da da da. da. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the I'm the raw dog queen and I'm listening like. These and then there was a teacher 
that uses her lyrics to get her class in order. Did y'all see that? Where yeah. she calls no, him I... and then she say, uh, ski wee or something like that. And all the kids say it. What do you think this is teaching these kids? They want to go and see where that's coming from. They want to go in and hear this song that they are repeating in a classroom. <laughs> Come on, man. Like this is contributing to, to the behavior that we are seeing in these no, young but... women no, and no. the boys. Because otherwise, if you ain't doing this in, in, let's say, in a classroom and they don't have a phone and they ain't doing these in particular thing, they never know about it. And they be playing with dolls somewhere and watching uh, a, a Pokemon or whatever they watch now. I have no clue. But I'm just <laughs> saying, man, they using this in a classroom, bro. Wow. What do you think these kids going to want to do? They going to want to go and hear that whole song. So I don't yeah, like I mean. It, it, the way I'm uh, working in the school, man, the there's no way to to cut them off from culture. And that's I think that's one of the things that a lot of parents don't understand. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, because when I was teaching, I started teaching like 07. It was like the beginning of the iPad. I mean, the iPod era where they downloading songs and they have songs, you know, what I'm saying just own them in earphones and, and all yeah. that type of stuff. Um, and even if you don't have it for your kid, they got a friend that got it. So they playing it in the locker room. They playing it in the hallway. They playing it in, like after school on a bus, all this type of stuff. Like we didn't have all that going on like back in our day where we you, we could just show you what we watching and all this type of stuff. So um, there are definitely a lot more influences on their behavior and their mentalities. Um, but. Uh, I, I really don't know what can be done, but we're going we're going to uh, be able to discuss that a little bit later uh, with our topic tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about the the modern women and some of the the unpleasant truths that come with dating them and dealing with them. Uh, so we're up against the clock right now, so we're about to take a quick break. But when we do come back, we'll get into our topic of the night. Y'all are tuning into the Hold Hogan podcast. And we'll be back in a minute. Hi, I'm relationship coach and Arthur Terry Duran, and I am pleased to announce that my book, It's Not That Complicated, is finally available as an audiobook. So if you don't like to read or you just don't have time to read a paperback book, this audiobook is perfect for you. You can listen to it while you're in your car, while you're at work, etc. In the book, I break down how husband material men think and operate in regards to sex, love, and relationships. And I provide real quality insight on how husband material men approach dating. The audiobook is available on audible.com and on iTunes. All you have to do is go to one of the websites and search for my name, Terry Duran. Go download your copy today. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Heart of Husband podcast. Uh, we have our special guest on for the night. We have Paradise Paris with us. What's going on? Hi, guys. It's good to be here. Uh, we definitely appreciate you coming on and chop it up with us. Uh, before we get started, uh, can you let the audience know a little bit about you, your background, etc.? Oh, I'm sure they know who I am. But if you don't, <laughs> <laughs> I am your favorite controversial content creator, Miss Paradise Paris. And uh, of course, you guys can find me at TikTok at underscore Paradise Paris, Facebook Paradise Paris, YouTube just landed in Paris, Instagram just it's Paradise Paris and on Twitter at underscore Paradise Paris one. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, not a problem, man. We uh, tonight's uh, episode is titled "Somebody Got to Say It," uh, so we wanted somebody with a um, that had the heart to say to talk about some of the unpleasant truths uh, in regards to women and some some of their behavior and dating experiences. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to ask you. Uh, what made you kind of jump into the deep end of choosing to give criticism of female behavior and dating tactics? Random topics that just generated throughout the internet atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I've been um, a social media, a real social media content creator for, I, I always say since 2017, but honestly, it's okay. been well before then. I've always been... Um, going viral I've always been popular I've always been a part of certain sectors where I've gravitated to having certain opinions so it wasn't something that I went and went like oh they need me 
you know, it was more so of uh, people gravitated towards what I said and what I, you know, my stances and because I can articulate myself well, it just worked. It just stuck. It was for me. Mm, that's what's up. I like that. Do you, um, with your platform, I've seen, of course, a lot of your videos. I've seen a lot of the backlash <laughs> that you got because I get a lot of it too. But um, do you get uh, do you get more backlash um, from women than men? It's because equal. you hold men accountable too. It's equal because yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, it's equal. Now, what I will say is the difference is most women will block me. Most women will block me. <laughs> if they don't like one post, if they don't agree with one post, um, they'll block me. Women have and, this thing where if you don't agree with something, they're done with you. Whereas men, they like to badger and hammer the point. And I say it's equal because everybody knows I have a satire series called uh, Daily Tips on how to stay ahead of men. And a lot of yeah, times, those men who are giving me criticism, they're looking at my commentary to always hold women accountable, always badger women, always, you know, like um, say things that they are going to be in agreement with. So a lot of times under that commentary, it is very much so ridicule, judgment, them actually getting their rocks off to say how they really feel. <laughs> I, I, how does it make you feel when you know especially the women are calling you pick because i shared a couple of your videos and that's the main thing i'll get in the comment section oh she's a pick me this that and the third first they use the word wrong okay let's start there <laughs> um secondly i don't um take that as a negative actually we had what we call spaces awards on twitter i was crowned queen mm -hmm. pick me and actually that's our <laughs> That term yeah, has been given to me for years. Like when it was first coming out, that term was like used. It never. It, that doesn't make sense though. Like it's all women really want to be picked. It's like not exactly. that people say it is, and it's not because of the fact of the desire to be picked or the fact of like um, it, it's not the dig that people say it is because if anything, you're acknowledging that I'm not a batter woman i don't have any resentment i don't have any issues or harbor against me i can acknowledge the fact that i can coexist amongst men and honor them and respect them so you're calling me a pick me to degrade me from just simply acknowledging or responding to or being on the side of men and i don't understand that because a lot of times when women are giving advice women are giving you advice to self-destruct they're giving you advice that does not Sounds have any great point perfect it don't it don't have any perseverance to it at all and it's yeah. crazy because what you will find is a lot of times women will tell other women let women do what they want to do but anytime a person tell you to let you do what you want to do they know you're gonna do some bullshit yep <laughs> but you know what's crazy Lean, though to slaughter. yeah you you know what's crazy though what I, what i find funny is that when the women come to pages when we hold them accountable or something and they come to your page and want to ridicule you or insult you or tell you hey why don't you talk about the men i never i have never in my life seen a woman under a panderer's page talking Ever. about men <laughs> that they nope. only talk about men saying hey why don't we even this out and talk about some women sometime never they right. always they all in there with praise say it louder for the people in the back period this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> they they praise and support it when it's about a man. But Every when time. it's about them, they all of a sudden tell you that you do not hold men accountable at all when you can go down there and count an equal just amount of number of videos or posts that hold Absolutely. men accountable, but miraculously they never see it and never and make any comments under them panders posts. What makes it even worse is they get so upset that you have a platform to say those things because mm -hmm. you're not you're not doing what they want or you're not using your platform the way that they want they yeah. don't acknowledge the fact that they can simply keep scrolling another thing Aren't is they amazing? love to say absolutely they love to say we're not a monolith but if we're not a monolith <laughs> and i have the right to think how i think and feel how i feel why are you so gung-ho of making me feel like i'm wrong for being an individual yeah yeah i mean it, there are a lot of things about it like Oh, you know, when I when I got into the relationship advice, I thought that 
being a married man, being a guy that can articulate the male perspective uh, and being a former hoe, I figured that I would be able to give women all the tools that they need to have healthier relationships with men, to understand men better and stop making a lot of the silly mistakes that I see women in my life and around me make. Um, but it turns out to be quite the opposite. Why do you think it's so difficult to get women to understand or recognize the things that they do that contribute to their negative dating experiences or their heartbreak? Because everything in society has been per perpetrated for where women get to get an excuse. Everything. And men created that dynamic. That's the thing about the patriarchy. In a lot of ways where women are trying to dismantle the patriarchy, they weaponize it to their own benefit in order to get across things that make them feel better. Like literally, that's all it is. And it's all based in feelings, which are, you know, valid to you, right? Like they only mm -hmm. exist to you, you know, they don't exist to any other person. Even if I can see your feelings, you crying is not going to make me tear up, you know? So it's like, um, when we talk about the idea of society, two things that are, have always held true. The children should not respect their mother. A man should always respect a woman. And that's what, I don't care where culture you're in, those things are taught. Children should always honor and respect their mom. And a man should always respect women. And I heard someone say something uh, along the lines of, women are not inherently taught to respect men the way that men are taught to respect one, women. That's true. I don't care if you come from a two-parent household or a single-parent household. A woman's primary goal is always to embed into her son. You need to have a decency respect for women, like always. Even if it's a woman who, you know, is a whore or whatever. Cause, yeah, because any guy that, that mistreats women is ridiculed by men and women. Correct. It, so you don't you think that's kind of problematic though like i mean yeah. and like 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 right now and i mean because right now what we are seeing now in in our generation and day and age is a complete lack of respect for me all across the board. Yeah. yeah and 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 i think that that's got a lot to do with it because it's not really taught to a, a lot of women to respect a man that way it depends on your culture because some cultures do you know what i mean well they come from a yeah. certain culture where the yeah. men i know some of these here women where they had to do things for their dad and when they dad passed they had to treat their brother because he was the man of the house now mm -hmm. just like the dad they had to make his plate fix his food prepare the meals all of those type of things so some cultures do do that mm -hmm. but in our particular community there is becoming a a complete lack of respect for men but they still want the men to uh, and the benefits be for the finances yes mm -hmm. and, and yep. be protectors of them even though they don't respect the men and that's where a lot of the clash is coming from you, you know, know what that? it's kind of more so and and i'm just using this as an analogy it's kind of like being somebody's baby daddy to the community mm -hmm. because if you do right and it's not right the way that she wanted done right she can go tell somebody you a deadbeat and they're gonna believe it because she's a woman and this is problematic because all of this comes under the basis of there not being any room for correction for women it usually comes later on down the line when she's done lying to herself when her delusion has faded when none of the way that she's behaved in any type of relationship friendship um family ship you know intimate partnership when that has failed her substantially time and time again, and she's sitting there looking at herself as she's gotten too late. Yep. Loved her, and she's going, I fucked up. But that's way too late because even down <laughs> that line, those women typically separate themselves from the bad bunch. They typically go on and they start, you know, camouflaging themselves into society and living morally. Whereas the women who are feeling like they're benefiting or still in that state of delusion, they typically stay around to influence so, other women. Um, Pat, so, so do you think that women are overtly aware that, hey, they have society that kind of sways their way and protects them for that matter? Do you think they're overtly aware of this? Because even by and large, when we have the conversation of protection, right? Protection mm -hmm. is done by proximity. A lot of times, 
most women will say, well, they're the ones who are doing the bad. Yeah, but they're also the ones who are protected from the bad. So, you know, by and large, men are more violent. That's an inherent trait of nature. It has nothing yeah. to do with anything else. You're more more violent does not mean that women are not violent. A lot of times women's violence is not discussed. It's left up swim of the rug. So there is no way of us to accurately measure the depiction of women's violence but, ever. But, so but even you know, with that, yeah, but the conversation is always a man should yeah. never with touch that, a woman. So even right. with that, it goes like, okay, even if that may be true, that, that's not no way of saying that there is never a way to omit the fact that men are also mostly protecting you everything else that you're talking about that you know men do or don't do comes at the basis of you trying to point out this isolated event but by and large most men are protecting women by and large most men are protecting children by and large most men are protecting people regardless yeah absolutely because men men uh one thing where where women i think um don't respect the men when it comes to that that protection aspect is because um women know that they can get away with certain things when it comes to men and men typically most men are just gonna walk away from certain things right whereas whereas men we respect other men out here the majority of us we respect other men while we outside because we know that there's always a threat of violence that can occur if we don't so as men we typically go outside and we don't we don't cause any problems with other men and this type of thing whereas women they figure hey i could cause trouble and this man ain't gonna do nothing to me because it's other men around that that should help me and protect me if he does but he shouldn't even put his hands to a woman so women complain about the same thing that's protecting them, like you said. Yeah, it's it's some that don't, but the ones that's keeping you safe are the very men that you're complaining about on pretty much 99% of the time while you're outside. And also, right, if we look at, as aside from like just the general dynamic, you don't see a lot of women um, security guards. It's not, that's not a thing in clubs. Um, And even like, and hate hate them so much, but even the police task force is primarily made up of men, the military Mm -hmm. primarily made up of men. So in any guards of sector of protection, you're gonna see men. Now, even when we talk about the provision thing, this is something that I brought up the other day and um, I, I was basically ranting on Twitter and I was like, there's never been a time where there has been a woman who is an active, who's sexually active and a mother in the black community where she's not getting additional provision by a man. It's never been a time. What used to happen was same thing that's happening now. Women do not show you their man unless you are the child's father and they happen to already be integrated into a relationship unless they get down you know the line and the stepdad come around but even if you think about it although black women have you know most of the housing and things like that acclimated the real reality of it is a lot of us are in debt and a lot of them are That's able the to get hope because there is a man somewhere around who is providing for her regardless if she's doing anything or not like there has always been a man who has provision where safety net there's always a safety net exactly you used to hear um that that's my uncle but this man only come over later now you ain't understand <laughs> <Uncle Right? Joe. laughs> even now they always talk about the single mothers how they be having fruit snacks and playing their son games she gonna call me when the babies go to bed if you think that that woman i get her hair and nails done if that woman i get, you think like bill money just came up in this generation women been showing them light bill money for years like it ain't just yeah. happening right and it's not just about the sexual exchange it's about the fact that black men have always been somewhere in the background of a woman being hid right the same way you take pictures on vacation there has always been a man in the background being hid that only her <laughs> friends knew about that has been helping her financially even when it came down to school clothes you mean to tell me all this time you working this one job, you still ain't got enough money to pay your bills, but here comes school time. Your baby's got all these <laughs> Jordan, all these clothes, or come Christmas, income tax still ain't hit yet, and you get all mm. this stuff for your kids. The tree is full. Where do you think she's getting that money from? 
It ain't the truth. The poll. The poll. You, 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 you out here reading these women's mail out here. Yeah, yeah well, you're gonna, you're gonna wake up to so Everybody ain't in the strip club. For the total woman who is the CNA, because you know they barely get paid anything. For the woman who is working down at the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, but I always look at it like that's an easy route for women, right? It's so easy for women to monetize their looks or their sexuality that that's what most women turn to. Well, I ain't gonna say most, but a, a very large percentage very large. turn to um, just out of the set, you know. Cause it's easy to do. They would rather do that than work hard or, or use their brains or do something that pays less. Um, it's it's kind of like guys when it comes to trapping or doing doing crime. Um, it's easier for them to get involved and the rewards are a lot faster and usually more than working the job. Uh, but in both scenarios, they, they never account for the negative exactly. feedback or the negative blowback that comes from it. Um, it before we get up out of here, it looks like we are up against the clock. Um, before we get up out of here, I wanted you to get uh, let everybody know where they can find your content or how they can get in touch with you. Um, so, of course, again, you guys can find me on YouTube, just landed in Paris. I do stream weekly now. This week I missed because I'm here and I'm so happy to be here. Um, but next week we're back full fledged. I will be streaming on my YouTube, just landed in Paris, on TikTok at underscore Paradise Paris, on Twitter at underscore Paradise Paris one, and on Facebook and Instagram at Paradise Paris. And for all my business inquiry guys, you can um, find me at my email at contact.paradiseparis at gmail.com. Uh, we definitely appreciate you coming on uh, We always enjoy chopping it up with you uh, Before we get up out of here though, I want to give another shout out to my man Brother Soul Productions for keeping us laced with our Background music uh, I want to remind y'all to continue supporting the podcast Through our cash app and our PayPal uh, And Jay as Demon I appreciate y'all linking up So we can get another episode knocked out uh, Paradise we appreciate you taking the time To come chop it up with us this has been another episode of the Hold a Husband Podcast, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Peace.